Welcome back to another video on React and state management. Uh, so today I'm going to show a kind of a, a Redux pattern here using React hooks. So we're not going to need the Redux package or any of those libraries or dependencies, whatever you want to call them. We're not going to need like five different ones like you do when you do Redux. Um, we're not going to use a whole bunch of boilerplate. We're just going to use a very basic uh, setup. You can always break these things down and make a boilerplate if you want. But I'm going to show you the simplest way to use a Redux-like store using React hooks. So they have something called use reducer, which does essentially what Redux does. And so I'm going to show you how you can do that now. So to start off, I'm at stackblitz.com and a new React project, um, and this is the default. So uh, first thing we want to do is we want to add our store to the top level element of our React uh, project so that everything within it can access the store. So let's just go ahead and do store, store. And we're just going to import it from this file that we have yet to make. Let's save that and then new file, store.js. And let's just start off with the basics to get this working. Import React from React, com store is equal to. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the children. And we're just going to render the children inside of our store provider. So for now, I'll just say render, or sorry, return, uh, and we'll just say children, like so, export default store, uh, can I not, oh. div, div, there we go, okay, so now it's not broken, um, so now in our store, we want to um, create our store context. So this context is what we're going to be passing everything through and that's essentially like our gateway to our store. So we create our context in the store and we pass our whole application through that context. And then anywhere in our application we can reach back out to that context and get the current state or our actions as we call them um, in order to change the state. Uh, currently as it is. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull out the create context from React and we'll say we're going to export this so we can use it anywhere. Const store context is equal to create context like so. Uh, and then what we'll do is we will, instead of doing divs here, we'll just do store context dot provider. Oops, capital P, it is important. And end the div, store, context, provide it. All right, cool. So now what we need to do, we need to put the starting value of this provider. So the value that's gonna come out of this provider, we need to pass the value of our whole entire store, as well as the way you can, your, your actions or your dispatcher, the way you make changes to your store. So first thing we need to do is we need to grab the use reducer hook from React, so use reducer. Um, and then what we're also gonna do is we're gonna create an initial state. Um, so whenever you want a new state, you'll have to add it in here. So const initial state is equal to, and we're just gonna create a fruit state. And we'll just set it to an empty array. Okay. And so now what we wanna do is we want to uh, create our reducer. So this reducer is essentially, this is what is in charge of uh, managing your actions to control your state. I know it can sound confusing at first, uh, but let's just type this out and see if that helps. So, sorry, uh, reducer is the function. It's gonna take two properties, a state and an action. Um, and so, essentially, this state is whatever the current state is at the moment. The action is what you want to do to that state. So each action 
has to have a type. So we're going to say action.type. We're going to switch between the different types. So depending on what your type is, determines what action you take. So let's just say we're going to have a case of add fruit, like so. And we're in, when add fruit happens, what do we want to happen? Well, in this case, we want to return um, the fruits object, which which is directly same uh, syntax as here, as in the initial state, fruits. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the current state of the fruits, we're gonna spread it open, and then we're gonna add this whatever is passed as the action dot payload. So uh, an example, we want to add a banana to the list of fruits. So our state would be this initial uh, state at first and the action, the action type is gonna be add fruit and the action payload is gonna be banana in a string. Okay, uh, so go ahead and semicolon there. And then we need a default uh, so if no type is given, then we probably want to actually throw an error saying, hey, action type must be defined. That way when you're developing, you don't accidentally not pass an action type, okay? So if you wanted to add another action, you could just do this, like case, uh, add vegetable, and that would just you know return vegetables, state, uh, vegetables action dot oops payloads same thing this would do the same thing but you can do all kinds of things in these functions you can even uh, let's just say you wanted to um, mix fruit and who knows what that would do but well instead of returning an object we would then take you know let's just we would basically pass it a function so we could have a whole other folder over here called uh, functions or if you want to call them types uh, action types or actions and you could say you know if the case was mixed fruit then we want to return the mixed fruit function with the uh, state and the action and then you could defer whatever this is to a different file and you can have that file on a folder of actions which is very similar to Redux uh, but for this case we're not going to do that just to keep it simple so we do that, okay, so now what we need to do is we need to use the actual use reducer hook to put this into action and combine it with the initial state and then we're gonna pass that into our provider. So we'll say constant and we're gonna keep the same uh, syntax as our, our state hook does. So we're gonna use an array to destructure it. We're gonna say const state dispatch is equal to use reducer and we're going to pass in the reducer function that we just made up here and we're going to also pass in the initial state okay and so what this is going to do is it's going to use the hook the, the use reducer hook it's going to use this reducer function and then it's going to pass the initial state which is just empty array of fruits right here and now what we're going to do is in our provider we're going to give it the value of, and again we're going to use the same syntax where the first item of the, of the array is going to be state and the second item is dispatch like so like that so now anywhere inside of our application we can pull out the current state of our application which has the fruits right now we could also add vegetables and then it's going to take the dispatch and the dispatch is what is responsible for passing in what kind of change you want to make to the state, whether you want to add fruit, whether you want to add a vegetable. Okay, so that's going to be it for our store. So now let's head back over to our index file. So we now have our fruit state, um, which is available anywhere in here after we use the use context hook. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this uh, hello, and we'll say fruits. And we'll go ahead and uh, put fruits like that. And then we gotta change the name of this to fruits. Head on over to here. And const fruits is equal to export 
default fruits. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the use context from React, and then we're also going to need that actual the store context. So import uh, store context from the store. Like so, and then we're going to say uh, const uh, state and dispatch. Oops, I cannot spell. Is equal to uh, use context store context like so, and then we got to return something, right? So we'll just return a div, and in that div we'll say state dot fruits um, dot map, and it will map over each fruit. And so for each fruit, we're gonna pass in an, a list item that just lists out the fruit. Like so, and then um, let's see. Let's put an H1 here that just says fruits, like that. And then we we'll put an unordered list of these bullet points, like so. Fruit. So there aren't any actual fruits in our initial state, right? Because um, we set it with an empty array. Let's just put plum in here and see if it shows up. There we go. So now all of the items in our initial state are going to pop up. But let's just say, uh, let's say we wanted to actually add different fruits to our list of fruits. So right below the title, we'll go ahead and just put a button here. And this button is going to say add banana. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. This is bananas. Okay. Add bananas. Cool. And now, so on click, what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, an anonymous function here. That way it doesn't get executed as soon as um, it renders. So we'll say on click, we want to dispatch. And what action do we want to dispatch? Well, we're going to pass in the type of add fruit. Okay. And actually, let's get rid of this and see if we do get that error. Uh, okay. So we try to add action type must be defined. Remember we put that error right here, action type must be defined. So that's why we did that. So type is add fruit. And we'll say the payload is banana. Okay. Let's see if this works. Banana, 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 banana. Great. Now if we want to add another button. Uh, let's just copy and paste. Whoops that and this one's going to be add fruit so the type is going to be the same but we're going to do payload's going to be oops not fruit apple and it's going to say add apples single apple single banana okay. add banana add apple banana apple 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 banana, banana. <laughs> okay there we go we get the point so now we have our reducer uh, so just to recap, let's walk through what's going on. In our index file, the first thing we are returning is a store. And that store contains our context to our store as well as our reducer, which controls how our state is managed within our store. And everything within that store, uh, including fruits, can then use the context API to pull the state and the, and the actions the dispatch out of that uh, store. So now over in our store, uh, what this is doing, we'll get to this in a second. We're taking a single item, which is the children, we're rendering it inside of our store contact provider, which is why our fruits can use the same context to pull out that store. And that store is right here. We're using the use reducer instead of the use state hook. And we're passing it the reducer function, which controls what actions are taking to uh, mutate our state. And then we're pass giving it an initial state, um, where we say fruits is an empty object. Um, so what would happen if we took this out? Let's just see. Cannot read map of undefined. Right. So the reason why we get why we need an initial state in this case is because we are trying to map over the state.fruits 
But if you don't initially give it, you get this error because you can't map over something that doesn't exist. So one way you could get, go around this if you didn't want to give an initial state is you could say um, if the state dot fruits exist, then do that. Um, or you don't even need to do a question. You can do ampersand like that. So that way it doesn't narrow out. And when you add bananas, you now you get this error cannot read property from cat of undefined. So what this is saying is that in our store, uh, when we spread, we're actually under the hood, this is just Babel, um, sugar syntax that tries to concat everything that's in here with the next thing. Um, but in this case, since fruit is undefined, you can't concat that. So what we can do is we can, we can put a if um, state dot fruits if this is falsy which undefined is falsy so if it's then we're actually just going to return uh, fruits and then we're just going to initiate it with uh, the first one you pass through just like that so now you can happily go about your way uh, so these are just conditions in case you don't want an initial state so now if we get rid of that I don't think you actually need, let's see, and fruit, now we're saying I can't read property fruit of undefined, right here states. Ah, so now the initial state isn't there, um, that's interesting, so okay, so you always have to have an initial state, um, but you could just say an empty, an empty state, because state always needs to be defined which means you always need an initial state. So we can just put an empty object here, that should work fine. Um, add banana, add apple, cool. So there you go. That is how you use the use reducer hook and react along with the context provider and consumer in order to use a state management system across your entire application. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you wanna see in the comments and if you liked this video. See you later.